going to look at um, running crossword puzzle games inside of a class in the Edupunk. It shouldn't be that bad. We'll find out, eh? Alright, so we launch the class. It takes a while to get up and running. Looks like a regular class, but let's say, let's go into our content library. Now, um, let's say it is the month of October, and we know that Michael rowed the boat, or no, let's go with another one. Let's just pick anyone, but if we go down to the bottom of the list, you'll see X words. So, if we know the name of the game, or the, the month, uh, the, the things we're working on, we've got alive, and C means just the um, chorus. Alive, C, B, all, is the chorus and all the verses. Here's always the chorus plus verse one. So let's go ahead and grab that. So that would be a little bit bigger crossword puzzle than the simple one. And then after we add it to the class, Oh, look, we need three occasions of this. So I'm going to add that in two more times, and you'll see why in just a moment. We're going to add twice. Yes, it's already in. We want it again. Add it three times. Yes, it's in, and we're ready to begin. All right, now let's close that. And our first page, as we expect, is our puzzle. We're going to make it bigger so it completely fills up our screen. looks big enough to be able to write on easily. And we're going to go to the second tab, and we're going to set that up for the questions and answers, right? And so we're going to go down to the page with the clues. I think we are. Ooh, this is running slow. What is that about? Oh, I see. It jumped to the end of the document. Here's the clues, and we're going to make that bigger, right? Fill up the screen, make it as big as we want. Use the slider bars. And the next thing we're going to do is create some boxes that are filled so that not everybody can see it. And notice that I leave the numbers open so it's easy to see what might be the next one. And then we go to the third tab. And the third tab, we are going to want to be the, the answer sheet just for us to look at. So once again, we won't need to make this big, but we do need to cover it up because whenever we want to take a peek, remember we only use, basically only use a couple of tools. The selection tool, but notice when I click on this, it lets me peek, but the student, the other people cannot see. It lets me peek for the answer. I'm going to get rid of this extra whiteboard, and now I can play the game. I use two tools. I use the pencil tool and the select tool. So uh, one across, we use the select tool. Opposite of take, opposite of take. We click on the screen, go back, someone guesses give, we write the answer in. You might keep score. I suggest you let someone else keep score for you. And then we're ready for number one down. And so we go to one down, change to selection tool, one down, tough part of meat, tough part of meat. Ooh, I don't even know. Before I can give hints, I'm going to take a peek. One down, ooh, gristle. See it right there, gristle? Okay. And then I can give some hints and help people. <laughs> and so that's all for how to set it up and run the game. You're just continually going to move these down. It is, it is, <laughs> it drives you crazy at first, switching back and forth, but it's just a skill that you'll have to get used to. And that's all there is to um, conducting the crossword um, game. Uh, you, this is primarily set up for students who need to start practicing their English by leading and speaking more. Uh, us as teachers, speaking all the time, does not help the students to improve their English. So I want you students to feel free uh, let me know. I'll set up the time for the class so you simply have to show up, load up your crossword puzzle, and have fun with your English. So, I got it done under five minutes. Good for me. Hooray! That's all.